If you'll remember from part one, we are building this autocomplete text box using React. In this part, you'll learn about state as I show you how to filter the list as you type and select an item from the suggestions list so it populates the text box. In the last part, we got to the point where we displayed the text box and a list of possible autocomplete items below. In addition, we have an event handler that gets called and logs the current value of the text to the console as we type. In order to only show items in the list that match the text entered, we need to use the component state. Component state is just internal data belonging to the current instance of the component. Since it belongs to the current instance, you can have multiple versions of the same component on the same page at the same time, and they each keep their own individual state. So in this dot items, we have all the possible items. We will store the list of items which match what is entered in the text box in the components state. The state is initialized in the constructor. It is just a plain old JavaScript object, but it must be called state and must be on the current instance, i.e. on this, as this is the property react.component uses for the state. It's like a property which is special to React. So we're going to create this dot state and it's going to equal a new object literal. For the list of suggestions, we'll have a property called suggestions. When the component is first created, we want the suggestions to be empty, so let's go ahead and make it an empty array. Let's create a function to handle the user typing in the text box. We'll call it onTextChanged, and it's very important that it's an arrow function or this won't work. If you don't understand why this is, you need to learn about function context in JavaScript. The function will take the onChange event as an argument, we'll call it e. And now let's go down to the onChange attribute in the text box, and we're going to add that function there. We just put this dot on text change. there's no brackets at the end, we're not calling the function, just assigning it. So we need to get the value from the event. If the string is empty, we're going to want to make sure that the suggestions are empty as there's nothing to match on. This case would happen, for example, if the user types a single character and then deletes it. Now, you might think we empty the suggestions array by doing something like this dot state dot suggestions equals empty array. That seems to make sense, doesn't it? We just set the suggestions array on the state to be empty. However, this would be the wrong way to update a value in the state. The reason for this is that what gets rendered in the render function will probably depend upon the state. Now, in this case, it doesn't yet, but we'll be making render do this in just a minute. The idea is when you change the state, you change what gets rendered so that the component displays something different. This is what makes React components dynamic rather than static. For this reason, the component needs to know that the state has changed so it can re-render, call render again, and display the new version of the component to the user. React.component gives us a function, it's called setState, that does just this. So it's this dot set state, and now this takes a function which will return an object with any state changes in it. So any properties we want to change in the state go in that object. The reason it takes a function that returns an object instead of just an object is beyond the scope of this video. I do, however, talk about this in my Udemy course. So we want to set the suggestions to empty array, so the function just returns an object with suggestions as an empty array. You don't need to return the entire state from this function, just the properties you want to change. The else case is if for the text isn't empty. For this case, we're going to create a case insensitive regex to test for matches in the items list that start with the text the user entered.
Next, we're going to define the list of max matching suggestions and put it in a const. And this is going to be defined as taking the contents of the items array, sorting it alphabetically, and filtering it for items that match the regex we just created. We then need to update the state with the filtered list of suggestions. And actually, I've just thought of a better way of writing this. So we're going to use let and define suggestions so it's mutable, and we're going to initialize it as an empty array. And if the length of the string entered is more than zero, we set suggestions to be the filtered list of items. So we just need the regex in there, and then the filtered suggestions in there as well. And then after that, we just set suggestions in the state. This does exactly the same thing, it's just more concise. Now we're only going to render the filtered list of suggestions instead of the full list. I'm going to create a function to do this, which I'm going to call render suggestions. So we destructure the suggestions from the state. And if this list is empty, we don't want to show the UL element at all. Um, to do this, we can just return null from this function. Anything that is null won't render anything to the browser. So next is if it's not empty. And in this case, we want to copy and paste all the code from down here from the render function, or cut and paste rather, for the UL. So we're going to return that, and within that, instead of mapping over the items array, which is sort of all the items that we have, because we only want to output the suggestions, we change it to suggestions instead of items. Then in the render function, we call render suggestions in the place of where we had the markup for our UL. So now what should happen is when I type in the text box, only items which match the value entered get shown. But we have an error. v.test is not a function. It actually says there's two errors on the page, but they're both the same. Let's just go and fix this now. So I've got things the wrong way around here. I've done text value.test instead of regex.test, and I need to pass in the text value to the test function. So just the wrong way around there. We go back, try again. Cannot read property map of undefined. Again, just a small bug. It's not this.suggestions.map, it's just suggestions as we've already destructured. Third time's a charm. We're now getting everything filtered as I type. What's happening is the suggestions are being updated in the state as I type. Each time they are, the component's render function gets called again, and it only returns the list with the matching items, as this is what's in the state at the time the function gets called. So we have our filtered list. Next, we need to make it so when we click an item on the list, it populates the text box with it. To do this, we need to be in control of the value of the text input. Now, there are two types of controls in React, or inputs rather, controlled and uncontrolled. Currently, this text box is uncontrolled. This means the browser controls the value. The user types, and the text appears in the text box. If we make our text box controlled, we control the value via React. We make it controlled 
simply by adding a value prop and we'll set this now to an empty string. So look what happens when we're in control of the text box via React. I am actually now typing in the text box and nothing will appear. We will have to set the value ourselves from within the component. We will set the value of the text box using the component state. To do this, we're going to add a text property to the state and the value should just be an empty string. Then we want to go down to our render function and we want to extract this text value from the state. And then in our text box, we're going to make that value prop the text from the state. So that's what goes in the text box. Now we go to the onTextChange function and when the text box value changes, we want to set that value in the state as text. Now when we type in the text box, the value updates. To select the item, we need a function to say a suggestion has been selected. So we're going to go ahead and add a function, suggestion selected. It's going to take the value of the suggestion, which will be one of the items from the suggestion list as an argument. We're then going to update the state. So the value the text box uses is the selected suggestion. At this point, we're also going to wipe the suggestions list by setting it to be an empty array, as we don't want to still show it when the user has just selected an item. Finally, we need this to fire when a suggestion is clicked on. So we're going to go down to the li for a suggestion item, and we're going to add an onClick event handler, and we're going to add an arrow function in there, and this is going to call this dot suggestion selected with the suggestion text for this li. We should now be done and everything should work. Now as we type, it filters the list and when we make our selection, it populates the text box. So that's a success. We aren't done yet, however. Um, the component certainly isn't looking like the finished product. Join me next time, which will be next week, when we'll use CSS within React to make it all look very pretty. And in the final video, I'll show you how to populate the suggestions list with the names of all the countries in the world using something called props, which is a very important concept in React. You don't want to miss this video. I have new videos going out regular as clockwork every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 9am Eastern Time. Click that subscribe button now and don't miss them.